In class, we started talking about how to take the Laplace transform of step functions. And we actually did find a Laplace transform of a basic step function if it's standing alone. Uh, looks like this right here. Of course, we learned in class that step functions can often be multiplied by other functions. Something like this could show up in a differential equation. So we need to learn how to take a Laplace transform of something like this. The first step in being able to do that is finding the Laplace transform of something like this. Now this is a function times a step function, and both of these are shifted the same way. Um, an example of what this might look like would be something like this. So there's a function and a step function that both have this same t minus 2 in there. We're going to start by learning how to take a Laplace transform of these types of things. And as usual, whenever we're trying to find a Laplace transform of something new, what we do is we plug that into the definition of a Laplace transform and see what we get. Now the first thing I actually want to do here is I want to think about what this function looks like, f of t minus a, u of t minus a. So I'm going to make the argument that we should split up this integral into a piece from 0 to a and a piece from a to infinity. And the piece from 0 to a is just going to be the integral of 0. And the piece from a to infinity, uh, the value of the step function is just 1. So that is just going to look like this. Obviously the definite integral of 0 is just 0, so we get rid of that piece and this is what we're left with. Now this t minus a to me suggests that maybe we should replace t minus a with some variable. I'm going to call that new variable tau. And I'm going to complete the substitution replacing all of my t's with tau's. So t minus a we replace with tau. t we replace with tau plus a. dt becomes d tau. These limits of integration up here were values, uh, limits on t that went from a to infinity. What I like to do is replace t with tau plus a. And now I think it's pretty obvious that if we subtract a from both sides of this equation, our limits now go from 0 to infinity. Now this is starting to look a lot like a regular old Laplace transform. What we do have to do is one or two little steps of algebra. And now you'll notice that this term right here, this e to the negative sa, does not have a tau in it. It's a constant with respect to tau. So we can pull that out of the integral. And this integral that remains is just a Laplace transform of little f. So our notation tells us that we can write the Laplace transform of little f as capital F of s. I just reversed the a and the s and the exponent here to make it look nicer. And what we've learned is something new that we can stick inside of our Laplace transform table. Let's do a quick example on how to actually use this new formula we have. Let's start by finding the Laplace transform of t minus 2 quantity q times the step function uh, with the t minus 2 in there. Now obviously since we have a step function times another function right here, this is going to be the entry in the Laplace transform table that we're going to end up using. So let's compare our problem with the entry in the table. I think it's pretty obvious that our a value is going to be 2. So now this u of t minus 2 is the same as this u of t minus a. And I also think it's relatively obvious that this f of t minus a, which is f of t minus 2, in our example is going to be equal to this right here t minus 2 quantity cubed. Now the answer to this Laplace transform is just going to be this right hand side right here. We know e to the negative a s is just going to be e to the negative 2 s for our problem, but we need capital F of s. Capital F of s represents the Laplace transform of little f of t. So what we need before we can get capital F of s is little f of t. We have little f of t minus 2, and I think it's pretty clear that we can replace t minus 2 in this function with just a t and get little f of t is t cubed. If that's not clear, uh, we'll have a couple different ways of explaining that in class. But f of t is now t cubed, and now that we have little f of t, we can take the Laplace transform of little f of t to find capital F of s. So capital F of s in this example is going to be 6 over s to the fourth power and now we have everything we need on this right hand side of the formula to get our answer down here. Our answer is just going to be e to the negative as, e to the negative 2s, times f of s. Which of course we can write a little bit more nicely. So that process is pretty notation intensive, but once you understand the notation, I don't think it's too difficult of a process. Of course you're probably asking, what happens if you have an example where you have a function multiplied by a step function, but those two functions don't have the exact same shift like they did on the last example. Well, as it turns out, we can actually still use this same formula to do this if we want to. We can't do anything to change this step function right here, so we're pretty much stuck with an a value of 3. 
And if we're going to match up the Laplace transform we're trying to find with what we have in our table, then I guess this f of t minus a must be equal to t squared. Of course, in this case, our a value we already know is 3. Now, I'm going to make the same argument that I did last time. We know e to the negative a s because we know that a equals 3. All we need now is capital F of s. To get capital F of s, we need little f of t. The trick here is replacing t with a t plus 3. You know from function notation that you can plug anything you want in for t as long as you do it everywhere in the function, uh, the problem will be consistent. So we're replacing a t with a t plus 3, and the plus 3 and the minus 3 cancel on the left side of the equation, and you get f of t. On the right, t was squared. We're replacing t with a t plus 3, so that's what you have now. Now the whole reason we wanted little f of t was so that we could get capital F of s. And the way that we get capital F of s is we take a Laplace transform. Of course, the only way to actually do this Laplace transform is to FOIL this thing out. And you can take the Laplace transform of each individual piece. So now we have that capital F of s is this right here. And now we have everything we need to write down an answer. The answer to our original Laplace transform is e to the negative a s, which is e to the negative 3 s times f of s, which is 2 over s cubed, plus 6 over s squared, plus 9 over s. And that's it. Now using these same steps every single time, we can find a Laplace transform of a step function times any function. Okay, maybe not any function, but many functions. Okay, let's get you a video quiz. Um, I would like you to try to find the Laplace transform of this right here. Now, don't forget what you know about trigonometry as you're going through this process, and make sure to show your work. Explain to me what you're doing with this problem. Okay, good luck, and I'll see you all in class.